Hello everyone, welcome to a new video, which is actually video number 400 on my channel. I've had my channel now for just over five years actually, and it looks like I've done 400 videos. How? I don't know, but there we go, this is video number 400. Wow. <laughs> well, thank you for sticking with me throughout those five or actually six i think <laughs> years thank you to the new subscribers as well after my ukraine reaction video i seem to have gained a few more subscribers so thank you for that and thank you everyone for watching my videos throughout the whole time if you have or if you're new then welcome so we've just had another what we call Super Saturday with lots of national finals going on. And tonight I've just been watching Esti Lau for Estonia and Denmark's Melody Grand Prix. And this video is about Denmark. So the Melody Grand Prix for Denmark, the words Danish and inoffensive <laughs> are often used when it comes to Denmark. They're not quite on the same level as the other Nordic countries and they haven't qualified for a few years. I will say though, there are quite a lot of Danish entries I really like. Only Teardrops is one of my favourite winners of the past decade or so. I really like, well, 2012. That, I think, is very underrated, and I actually love that. 2020, I think, if the contest went ahead, I think they would have qualified. I actually really liked Riley last year as well, Breaking My Heart. I like that song, so it's not all bad. It's just when you compare them to other Scandinavian countries, they're just not up there with them. Now, the last time Denmark won Eurovision in 2013 was in Malmö. And then the next year, they went over the bridge to Copenhagen. So, not sure if that will happen again this year in Malmö. But it's a good chance for me to tell you. I don't think I've mentioned this on my channel yet. I am actually going to Malmö and Copenhagen for Eurovision. I'll be going to the semi-finals. I'll definitely try and film some stuff there as well. So I'll be going to Malmö and Copenhagen, visiting the two cities, going over the bridge, over the water. I think that'll be really fun. So hopefully that goes well. And yeah, I'd like to try and film another vlog if I can. So in terms of the Danish Melody Grand Prix this year. My favourite was Aura Dion. <laughs> you can call it a guilty pleasure, maybe it is a bit of a guilty pleasure, but I honestly really like it. I've been listening to it over the past few weeks and I'll continue to listen to it. She didn't win, she wasn't even in the top three. <laughs> Staging, okay, maybe it was a bit messy. I didn't really expect it to win anyway even though apparently she is quite well known in Denmark, or she was anyway, in about 2010. I didn't know that, but I do really like this song and I'll carry on listening to it anyway. But the winner was the predicted winner. It was the favourite to win and that was Saba with Sand and she opened the show and I thought the staging was really good. I was actually really impressed with the staging, the production. So I'm not surprised at all that she won. And I guess it was my second favourite after Aura. So I watched all the performances. So what you're seeing from me isn't my first reaction. Well, it is my first reaction actually for Aura de Jong because what I've done is I filmed my live reaction to Aura, regardless if she was going to win or not. So what you're going to see from me is actually two reaction videos in one video. 
So I'll show you my reaction to Aura, and it is quite funny. <laughs> and then I'm going to watch Sarah again, even though I watched it live, I didn't film a reaction to it, but I'll talk about it and watch it again and give you my thoughts. So for now, here is my reaction, my live reaction to Aura Dion from earlier. Okay, so Aura Dion is on next. So I I think the overall production of this show has actually been quite good. The stagings have been quite good. I mean, <laughs> the songs have been okay. Interesting that they put the favour on first. Saba, who was the favourite to wing the whole thing, she was on first, which is strange that they did that, but she was good, the best so far. I did not like that, what was it called? The chase, the zoom or something, that was awful. <laughs> that was the worst so far. But yeah, the overall production, the stagings have actually been quite good. I like this theatre venue as well, that's very grand. So yeah, but now, Aura is on at last, and this is the one I've been looking forward to the most. <laughs> I've been watching Esky Lau as well, I've got that open on another tab on my laptop, <laughs> I'll get back into that. But um, apparently Aura was quite famous in Denmark about 10 years ago, or more than 10 years ago. I actually didn't know her, I've never heard of her before, but... I did go back and listen to her other music and it is, it's quite nice actually. I do quite like her other songs that I've heard. Okay, here we go. Don't let me down. <laughs> oh, there's a mirror ball. So I heard that she was going to be dressed as a mermaid. I don't know if she is. Oh, she is? Oh, she, yeah, she's got a tail. Oh, there's a guitar. Okay, she sounds good so far. I love her voice, I honestly really do. And I like this whole mermaid on the mirror ball theme, I like that. Yeah, she sounds just like the recording. I think. <laughs> oh, see, I absolutely love the chorus, the yodeling. That's why I love this song, because of the yodeling. <laughs> Imagine having her on a giant mirror ball in Malmo on the Eurovision stage. <laughs> it could work quite well. I think she sounds great. Oh, don't fall. Oh god. I thought... Oh. I thought she was gonna fall. <laughs> Okay, you've got some contemporary dancing now. Oh no, there's dancers. Okay. Do we need the dancers? She's still sounding good though. She did the Sarah Benici loop. <laughs> the crowd are loving it. I think she's being a bit too risky with some of the choreography. 
they could have kept it a bit more simple. Okay, well I loved it. I mean, I wasn't sure if they needed the dancers and some of the choreography was a bit risky. I think if she stayed on the ball, it would have been fine, I think. But um, yeah, I really do love this song. You can call it a guilty pleasure. But I really like it and I would love that to win. <laughs> okay, well, that was fun. A bit chaotic. Um, so now that the show is finished and we have the winner, let's watch the performance from Saba again. Not surprised at all that she won. I think they made the right choice. So yeah, let's watch it again. I was really impressed with the staging. She was on first. I don't know why they put her on first, but it didn't matter in the end. It was a good performance. And she sounded good. Now this gives me kind of Melfest vibes. And um, when I found out it was written by, is it Melanie Weber or Melanie Webb? That did not surprise me at all. I thought, oh, of course it was. It's got Melanie Webb written all over it. And she has been involved with Melfest and Denmark, I think, before. But when I found that out, it made so much sense. <laughs> I mean, it's not amazing at all, you know. I, it might not even qualify again, but it is the best that they had, I suppose. It might grow on me as well, actually. Yeah, I think the overall performance probably was the best of the night. It's almost like it's ready for Eurovision, like the staging. They just seem to put quite a bit of an effort in with the staging. I mean, she's not doing that much, I know, but it seems like the most polished performance of all of them. And maybe there won't be much more of a staging for Malmo. Maybe they'll still keep it quite simple. Not sure what else they can do, really. I quite like the way she just belts out the word sound, like really, like, powerful. <laughs> It actually kind of sounds quite British in a way. I, I can't explain why. Oh, the, the staging with the big light around her, that's really good. The lasers, that's very Eurovision. Yeah, it reminds me a bit of Emily Sande, who's from the UK. Mm. Yeah, okay. I mean, I can definitely see why that won. Definitely. It makes sense. I mean, it is, I suppose it could be a little bit of an improvement for Denmark, but on the other hand, maybe not that much, really. I still don't see this as an obvious qualifier for Denmark, to be honest. Although maybe she'll just about sneak through, which will be good for them to qualify for the first time since 2019. But yeah, it's not, it's still not that impactful or competitive, but it was the best choice, even though I really liked Aura de Jong. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's good, you know, she's got a good voice nice song not going to be my favorite but i think it'll grow on me so there we go that was my two reactions in one go 
Let me know what you think of Sand, the Danish entry. Do you think it's an improvement for Denmark? Do you think this could qualify in Malmö? It's in semi-final two, I think. I don't know if that helps. Maybe a little bit. I think it's a good, but not brilliant. And it's not going to be a favourite of mine, but it's not bad, you know, it's definitely not bad. So thank you for watching. Leave your comments below on both of these songs. If you like, tell me what you thought about Aura de Jong as well. Do you think that maybe she should have won <laughs> or being in the top three? Or do you think it was a bit of a mess? Maybe. <laughs> but yes, thank you for watching. Congratulations, Saba and Denmark. I'll see you very soon for another new reaction video. Good night.